All right, so episode 16 of Finding Your Place. Um, already in the middle of the conversation here with Jody Piles. If you don't know Jody, he is um, a local guy, uh, was running for the 12th seat uh, against Chris Hurst. Um, uh, kind of didn't ever really have the opportunity to go up against like Jason Ballard in a primary. He was just pretty much moved to the side. Jason was put in place. And, um, you know, I guess we're all thankful that Jason won. But I think people should know your story and how it happened and how they didn't even get a choice between someone that wanted the seat versus the guy that got the seat. So, Jody, like, just tell them, you know, who you are. Let's start, let's start getting into this story kind of like we were, um, kind of like we were here. So, right. Uh, first of all, thanks, Scott. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, the way it all started, um, a little over a year ago, uh, actually two years ago now, I came out very hard against Chris Hurst. Uh, it was during the whole two-way sanctuary counties and cities and stuff, during all that. And it was right after that, while they were in session, that's when Chris had his little incident on 460. Right. And um, so I was, I mean, I was hammering him hard. Well, I get a message from a guy who is one of the chairs of Giles County. And he's like, hey, what are you looking to do with this? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you and I need to sit down and have a conversation. So we, we have a phone conversation, and basically he's like, I feel like you have a strong enough presence and you're well-spoken enough that we think you should run against Chris Hurst. Mm. He's like, have you ever thought about it? I'm like, not until just now. Because, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a business owner. I, you know, I've pastored. I've done a number of things. But the idea of politics is, you know, I've kind of kept that. I was like, who wants that job, right? Yeah. And – um. Especially now. But um, so um, I, I hung out with this guy a couple times. He took me to a few meetings, kind of, um, I don't want to say wind and dine me, but he took me and you know, to brush elbows with the right people, mm -hmm. you know, in, in certain groups. The movers and shakers in, you know, Giles and Montgomery County, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the GOP. And um, so that, was, that mindset was there. And he said, you know, we got plenty of time because we're looking, this was back in, I think January at this point of 2020, uh, January, February. Well, as it progressed, didn't really talk that much, but I was kind of had it in the back of my mind. Okay. This is I'm, a possibility. I'm going to run for uh, house of delegates. And, um, so as I'm looking into that, um, I ended up getting an opportunity. I also used to own a production company where I ran sound at small events. Um, I have a country band that traveled. So I get a phone call from Marie March. Yeah. And uh, who's like, hey, I'm having this event. We're having Amanda Chase, you know, at the time as a senator who is running for uh, governor. Yeah. And um, we're going to have her. Will you come? And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know who Amanda Chase was. Um, I was at the January uh, 20th thing and remember, but it, I didn't place it. You know what I'm right. saying? So she's like, do you have a problem coming? I'm like, ah, I'll go anywhere, you know, you know, play music, yeah. you know. Uh, musicians are those uh, special people. They'll they'll drive anywhere for nothing to play music, right? <laughs> right? For the love of it. So I said, sure, I'll come. So I found out what it was. Found out it was a big GOP thing. You know, um, she was pushing for the Republican, you know, um, and uh, nomination. But so I actually reached out to this gentleman, and who had kind of uh, roped me in to to come in for House of Delegate. And I said, hey, I said this is going on. Uh, it's going to be at Fatback Soul Shack. Uh, just letting you know, you guys should come down. He's like, oh, absolutely not. Anything to do with Amanda Chase, uh, we're not going to have anything to do with it. And I'm like, why? Because like I said, at this point, all I know is she's pro-guns, you know, pro-God, yeah. pro-America. I'm good, you know. Yeah. And um, and frankly, there was nobody else on scene at that point running for governor. Right. And uh, I'm like, I don't understand what's the, what's the, what's the point. And I have all this conversation I still have it. Yeah. In my, in my, I've saved it. Yeah. And um, he's like, look, Amanda Chase is toxic. And if you go to that event, if you have anything to do with her, we're not going to push you as the nominee for House of Delegates. Well, I'm the type of person I don't like being bullied. Yeah. And Frank, I told him, I said, look, I said, I'm doing a job. That's it. I went and did the job. Ended up um, uh, actually that weekend connecting with Amanda and her team and becoming really good friends yeah. <clears throat> to where she invited me to come to work for her. Honestly, I believed in everything she was saying and she and I became good friends. And, um, 
you know, I, I was a supporter. Yeah. And um, this person found out about it. And I, I actually messaged him again. I'm like, what is your issue? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling with her and I'm hearing all this stuff, you know, as I'm on her team. I, like, I've traveled with ministries, man. Yeah. You know, in worship teams and with pastors. And there was more integrity in Amanda Chase's campaign than I've seen in a lot of churches. Wow. And um, I'm like, what, what y'all's problem with her? And he's like, she's not a Republican. You, to be Republican, you got to, and it was basically, you got to be part of this group. And so this is my first experience ever understanding establishment Republicans yeah. and the rhinos and, and conservatives versus Republicans. Yeah. Right. And, um, so I, I basically told him off. I'm like, look, dude, you called me. I didn't call you asking for your approval. I don't need your approval. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I don't need you. So fast forward until, uh, January of 2021, and I had heard that a council member in Radford might be running, Onassis Burris. Um, and so I thought, well, he's going to run. I'm not going to. Well, then Onassis actually reached out to me. He's like, hey, man, because he and I had been talking, and we'd had coffee together. And it's like, if he runs for House of Delegates, I'm going to run for city council and try to get his seat when he steps up. And um, he's like, I'm not going to run. Some, there was some conflict with his work. He goes, you need to go ahead and run. I was like, okay. So I started putting things in motion to where I'm going to run. Yeah. I reached out to this individual in Giles County. I reached out to the head of the GOP in Radford where I reside. Yeah. Um, so these were the two that I, I reached out to. I reached out to another gentleman who's head of the GOP in Montgomery County, or at the time he was, and um, let them all know. Hey, I'm, I'm looking to run. I want to put, throw my name in the hat. And, um, so they all knew. And once again, I have emails and messages saved from all this, these, you know, transactions. And, um, so fast forward, I've, I, I begin to pull together basically like a little cabinet of advisors. Yep. You know, you were, you were part of it. I was, you know, we, we met. Uh, we did, we did some, uh, we had some work through zoom. You, you were sitting at my, my dining room table. Yeah. Um, and, um, just to kind of, how do we, how do we proceed with this? Yeah. How do we move forward? I had people, I had advisors, um, all across the state that I was, I was using on this. How do I, how do I do this and do it correctly? Cause I don't want to look like an idiot, you know, yeah. when I step out there. And, um, so I ended up, I told, I said, you know, what I want to do is I feel like Giles County is the forgotten area of you know the 12th district yeah obviously and um i was like you know what i have strong roots in giles county my great grandfather was born in giles county my grandfather was born in giles county my family ended up moving to north carolina which is where i was born mm -hmm. but i thought you know what for me those strong roots i'm going to go to giles county on the courthouse and i announced it made it public on february the 8th i did a live on the courthouse steps of Giles County on a Sunday afternoon and a bunch of people showed up and, and I basically announced officially I'm running for house of delegates. So that night I found out that the four heads of the GOP in uh, the 12th district, which was Pulaski County, Radford city, Giles County and Montgomery County. Um, now Giles County, Montgomery County had to use segregate, uh, uh, had to use uh, surrogates, surrogates to, yeah. to step in because the people who are actually the chairman of those areas don't live in the 12th district. Something, something crazy. Uh, I don't know. But because in Montgomery County, half of it's in district seven and yeah. half of it's in district 12, whatever. But anyway, yeah. so I don't know the gentleman who was on the, the phone call from Montgomery County. Um, but anyway, those four people had a phone call about me. And because I spoke to one of the, the people that was on the phone call, they come back to me later and told me. And essentially, they were trying to figure out how to, what do we need to do to make sure Jody does not get the nomination? Uh, now, let's back up a little bit. This gentleman in Giles County already told me, he says, we've got somebody we want to run. So I get a random phone call one day from Jason Ballard. And Jason Ballard called me and he's like, hey, you know, I hear you're, you know, kind of a mover and shaker, you know, in politics in this area, which I didn't know that. But um, 
he says, you, you know, you're, you're, you're well known. And uh, basically he was calling to try to get my support. Uh-huh. And, um, and he said, well, you know, where do you stand? I said, I'm going to be up front with you right now, Jason. I said, I'm about 80% sure that I'm going to run. I said, so you have the next 30 minutes of a phone conversation that you can either a convince me to vote for you or B reassure me that I need to run. And I, we, we began to chat, and I began to ask him questions. I asked him questions on a bill that had just uh, came out in special session about uh, the legalization of marijuana. And uh, he's like, oh, I'm all for the legalization of marijuana. And I'm like, I, I said, you know, that's, that's great, but do you feel like that represents your constituents? Would the majority of the conservatives in the area agree with you? And he's like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I said, well, but that's who you represent. As a representative, you should represent the needs and the desires of the people in your area, not yeah. just, hey, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, it's my personal agenda. We have too many politicians doing that already. Right. And um, I begin to pull some things out. I'm like, well, do you understand that this is in the bill, that this is in the bill, that this is in the bill? And he's like, well, I didn't know that. He's like, well, how do you know that? I said, I read the bill. <laughs> and he's, he's like, well, now what do you do exactly? How do you, how do you, how did you, by the time the conversation was over, Jason was like, you know what? I think you'd be a good candidate. <laughs> and so the 30 minutes was up and I, t- I said, Jason, look, here's the deal, man. I said, I appreciate the conversation. I said, you know, I have to say I'm a hundred percent. He goes, awesome. So I got your support. I said, no, I said, I was 80% sure that I was running before. Now I'm a hundred percent sure I'm running. And I said, can we agree that we're going to run a primary and everything's clean? We're good. You know, he's like, yeah, man, good luck to you. I mean, he was super polite. Yeah. Super nice. Um, and I'm, I'm sure he's a great guy. Um, but uh, so got off the phone, and that's when I began to to work towards, you know, so fast forward back to yeah. uh, Feb- February 8th, and that's when I announced publicly that night those four leaders had that phone call. They agreed that night on the phone that instead of using February 24th, which was the state date to get your paperwork in, which is on the website, they decided amongst themselves that they could, and they have the right to do this, they could move the date up. So they decided to move it to the 14th or 15th. I think it was the 15th. And, um, but they didn't. I never once got a phone call, never got an email, never got a, anything. They posted it on the... It's, I can't remember the website they posted it on, but it's so hard. Like you, you, you could, I never even found it. So fine print. It yeah. was in the fine print. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, which they followed the rule. How can four people make that decision? It's their prerogative. I, I will tell you this. I talked to Rich Anderson, who is the head of the, he's the GOP chairman of the state yeah. about this when I found out about it. And I'm like, is this, and he, he actually, he says, hold on. He said, I'm gonna call you back. He goes, I don't know if they can do that or not. He actually called me back, and he's like, you know what? He said, it shows a lack of integrity. And this is coming from him. He says, it's dirty. He said, but technically they can do it. Wow. And um, so what happened was, so that was on the 8th. Now, fast forward to Tuesday night, the 10th, and I was actually speaking at an event um, at Fatback Soul Shack, and, um, or I was there, we was, uh, we were doing some things for Marie March, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you might've been there. I can't, I can't remember, but, um, one of the guys who was working on my campaign, he, um, him and another guy that was working on my campaign, Joe Cromer, great guy, insurance agent in Christiansburg. He ended up, um, him and another guy went to on Tuesday, Giles County GOP headquarters and spoke to this guy and said, Hey, Jody just announced Sunday. What do we do? We have Jody's paperwork. Who do we turn it into? Now, this guy's one of the four people that's over the GOP in the, in the 12th district. Looked at him and says, I don't have a clue. Knowing they just had that conversation on Sunday night about moving the deadline up. And he straight up told him, I have no clue. So Joe calls me. He's like, I don't know. And I said, well, we're good. We got to the 24th. You know, I'll, I'll call Rich Anderson. I'll call somebody on, on the state level, see what I can figure out. Well, fast forward till the next week. That's when we were at Fatback Soul Shack, and I was speaking, and someone actually sent me a message said, hey, this is on Facebook that Jason Ballard just announced he is the has the Republican nomination because no one else put their 
turn uh-huh. their paperwork in. And I'm like, nah, that's, that can't be right. I said, today's only like the 14th or 15th, whatever. I said, it can't be right. I said, it's the deadlines. Tw- and I actually pulled up the website. I said, see, there's the deadline. I was like, it's gotta be something wrong. And, um, come to find out those four people, they contacted Jason and let him know the deadline's been moved up. Turn your stuff in. Never let me know, even though all four of them knew I was running and never made it public in this area, you know, where the everyday common person can go look at it. Uh, they, they hit it, like I said, amongst the, the small print and, um, and then started bashing me. Like, is, you know, is this the kind of guy you want? Somebody can't even get their paperwork in on time. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Two days after I announced I had my paperwork ready, you know, and took it to one of your offices and y'all, oh, I don't have a clue. And I never thought, you know, you hear about politics and how corrupt it is on, you know, a national and a federal level. Yeah. You never think on a small level how this stuff is so intertwined and so corrupt. And I'll be honest with you, for a long time, I kind of had this mindset, I'm coming out, I'm like, I'm coming after these people, yeah. you know. But then I kind of got to the point, I was like, you know what? What goes around comes around. Um, and I'll tell you this, I actually had a meeting with Chris Hurst. When, when I said I was going to come out and run, yeah. we had already had a meeting planned. We were going to sit down and have a conversation about basically a gentleman's agreement, how we're going to run this campaign. Yeah. And um, all that happened, the first thing Chris Hurst said when we walked into a meeting together, he said, man, he said, your own people screwed you. Yeah. And uh, I said, what do you mean? And he laughed. He goes, he said, they did me the biggest favor they could have ever done. I said, what's that? He said, they got rid of you. <laughs> and uh, I even asked him, I said, what do you think about Jason? He goes, Jason's not on my radar. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not knocking Jason. I'm not knocking Chris Hurst. Both are men, and I respect them in their own elements. But Chris Hurst gave away District 12. Yeah. I mean, to go and do the things he did. I mean, the night before the election to go and do what he was doing. I'm like, come on, man. How, how crazy you got to be? And for, in my opinion... A strong candidate after the whole DUI, after, you know, driving while revoked and vandalism, right? after all that stuff has taken place, a strong candidate should have creamed him in the polls. Yeah. He didn't get creamed. What was the percentage? Uh, it was less than 10%. I can't was remember. It? I mean, but a strong candidate should have walked on the scene and mopped the floor with him. Yeah. Um, and he didn't. So that, that tells me right there. We didn't have a strong candidate. There were people who voted for Jason just because they refused to vote yeah. for, you know, for Chris. Yeah. And, um, and, I mean, and P, it was just a down the line vote too. I yeah. mean, it, you, you was either, you was either voting Democrat or Republican on this ticket. I right. think, I don't think there was any, you know, there was any deviations no. here. No. Um, and, and, and once again, where we didn't get a primary yeah, because that was taken away from us. Um, so it was, it was whoever was holding that seat, mm-hmm. whoever, whoever had the R beside their name, Yep. Was gonna be the was gonna be the winner right. of that of that seat in that, in that moment. And 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 here's what's funny. So I actually had once all this has transpired, this is prior to the election, once all this transpired and I basically got, you know, booted. Uh, and, and I'll tell you the reason that happened is because I don't apparently to play well with others. Yeah. I don't take crap. I'm not going to think s- for yourself. You're, Ooh, you're an independent, you're independent thinker. How that's, dare not gonna, that's not going to tow the line of the establishment. Like sounds like exactly what we needed. Well, I, I believe <laughs> in standing up for what's right. Yeah. Not, well, this is my buddies and this is what they're doing. Yeah. You know, forget that. Yeah. You know, to me, pol- too many politicians are out trying to make friends instead of standing up for the people that they yeah. represent. Um, but um, I actually had a gentleman come up to me and he says, Hey, you know what happened to you was wrong. But I'll tell you what, if you'll get behind Jason and you'll support him, there's going to be redistricting next year. And so we're going to have to have another election. We'll guarantee you'll get the Republican nomination. I look, I said, absolutely not. I said, to heck with you and to heck with this Republican nomination. I don't need the, re- I mean, I'm conservative. I believe in the Constitution. Two, two things in my life I don't think waver, and that's the Holy Bible and the Constitution. Right. What's said is said. What's done is done. It's it's and they're both don't need to be added to or taken away from. And, you know, I'm like, I don't I don't I don't need this group of people. 
You know, and I think the problem with our country, and I realize as it's trickled down, even on a local level, is we only have those two choices, and one's just as bad as the other these days. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it. I mean, I'm I'm part of the Republican Party in in Radford. You know, and I don't feel like the Republican Party represents me anymore. Um, I feel like everything has shifted too far to the left. You know, if you back up, uh, you know, a couple generations. Democrats were, you know, solid, you know, solid people. They're, the Democratic Party of JFK is not who we have now. Yeah. Now, everything you no longer, like if this is the, the center line, right, and this is right and this is left, it's like everything has shifted to where that center line is here now. Yeah. Yep. And I agree. You know, and we need, we need something to pull us back to the conservative values that our country was founded on. Yeah. You know, God and country. And, and I feel like the Republican Party used to be that, but no longer are they represent. There's a whole group of people over here that are now considered to be extremists. Because why? Because they believe in God? Because they believe in patriotism? You know, when, when does that make you an extremist? I mean, for anybody that thinks that, you know, uh, <clears throat> America first is oh, some bad thing. Forbid. I mean, come on. I mean, we should think we should we should have pride in where we come from. We should have we should have pride in the people that work in this country. We should we shouldn't want China's uh, products in a in the capacity that we right. take them in. We should manufacture some of that stuff. Right. I mean, you know, I think leadership matters. I right. think it shows up everywhere, especially uh, you know when it comes to money. The leadership uh, definitely makes an impact in the monetary system that we that we run in. Uh, evidence is gas prices. I mean, right. I think I think I filled up. I got to buy premium gas. It was almost it four dollars a gallon. It hurts, you know. It was, and I think that has everything to do with um, the policies set with the leadership of the country. So, Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I've traveled all over the world. I, I'm part of a group of people. We travel and rescue child slaves and sex trafficked females wow. all over the world. And I know what it's like to be in these third world countries under poor leadership and, and under uh, I've been to socialist and communist countries. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen how things are, you know, in, in various areas. And, and, and I've always thought, man, it, there was something amazing every time I would fly back. And as soon as that plane would hit, you know, American soil, it's like ah, a relief. Right. I'm, I'm home. You know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in the greatest country that's ever been. Yeah. And, to see the spiral that we're starting to make and it's, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. And just to tell you how far these people went trying to boot me out and, and to shut me up. Um, I even got reported to the FBI Yeah, uh, and the ATF. I was told that there was an investigation with, uh, against me for, from the ATF that, uh, for selling illegal firearms, which is like, I was like, where, Really? Like, where did that come from? Right. And um, then the FBI actually showed up to my house. I had two FBI agents walk in, and I've never said any, anything about this publicly, but two FBI agents walk, come into my house. I'm upstairs in the bathroom shaving, and I go downstairs, and here's two FBI agents. They sit down on my couch and begin to, you know, question me. Basically, someone uh, from this area reported me. And they gave me some ideas. Uh, they never came out and said names. But, I mean, I used to be a police officer. I used to be an investigator. It's pretty easy. I begin to make phone calls and find out for myself. I know who made the phone call. And to get me to shut up, to kind of boot me out of the way, reported me to the FBI, said I was an insurrectionist that I raided the Capitol on January 6th, and, which is completely absurd. Yeah. You know, um, but that's to, to what lengths – are people going to go through to have their good old boy club? Mm. You know what I mean? And to make sure that they maintain control. And, you know, I'm glad that our, our, that our country has, you know, or our, our state has shifted red. Um, I'm hoping it's, it's, it's going to be, and and people stand up for, for actual conservative values. Once they get there in Richmond, I'm concerned um, because all the way down, I'm, I'm I'm concerned about the the ones who are taking uh, those positions, but I hope they truly stand up for conservative values. If so, then great. I'll be the first to, you know what? Not a fan of the way Jason Ballard did it, but as long as he does the job, that's what matters. To me, what matters is 
one, that people are represented. But the second thing is, why did the people get their voice taken away? Yeah. There should have been a primary. There should have been. Where people could choose. If he beat me outright, if the five people threw their hat in, may the best man or woman win. Yep. You know what I mean? Who the people choose should be who definitely, got it. Definitely. They shouldn't They shouldn't have disqualified you over a clerical error and shifted the dates on you. I just feel like um, the people, the people, even though we got a better choice than possibly what was there, right? They didn't get they didn't get the the opportunity that they deserved, right? You know, and, and it was known across the state what happened. Yeah. Um, once again, you know, Rich Anderson, head of the you know the chair of the GOP, he he called, me, man, I'm sorry, I hate this, man, you really got screwed, I'm sorry. You know, I had a couple senators calling me. I had other delegates. I can't believe there's nothing. I mean, minus this conversation, uh, I can't believe there's nothing that, you know, from the top chair guy to that particular section of the GOP, he should be putting pressure on them to change leadership or do something that doesn't equal their agenda getting across but the but the people's agenda. You know, it's like four people had an agenda. Right. They wanted this guy. They got to choose this guy. They got to screw you. That how many people are in the twelfth? I mean, yeah. I mean, they, you know, their voices got silenced over four people's agenda. Right. No matter what we think about Jason, that's the facts of the scenario. Right. Given your story, and and I, I, one of those four people has contacted me since then, and has apologized, hmm. um, and said, "Look, you were done wrong, and I'm sorry." Uh, one. The other three, not a word. Wow. Jason, I've reached out to Jason a number of times. Not a word. Mm. Um, you know, it's sad that the opposition, Chris Hurst and I have talked a few times since then. Yeah. And Jason, who is supposed to be my representative now. Can't get him. Can't get him. Mm. Um, but – you know, it's it's unfortunate. You know, the people did lose their voice. Um, and I have no problem taking a back seat to whoever would win. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the people should have been allowed to choose. Definitely. And that's what matters. Um, and, but to me, the only way that's ever going to change is you've got to, on a local level, people need to show up. People need to go to their local meetings. Yeah. You know, whatever their municipality or their county, you know, meetings, are, they need to go. And they need to find out who these people are, find out their actual voting records, find out what they stand for. Because I can tell you right now, in Pulaski County, there's a lot of people with R besides their names that do not vote that way. Mm. Um, you know, and, and, and it's sad. Um, but people need to make their voices heard on a local level. Good people need to step up and take these positions, take these seats from these folks. Yeah. And then let it let the change. It's got to start here. It's got to start grassroots. Yeah. You know, and that's really why I'm excited to see what Marie does. You know, I'm excited to see her progression through the political life and how much of an impact she can make in Richmond with networking and, you know, getting, you know, getting the New River Valley or, you know, her district, uh, uh, you know, her her agenda through, you know, and like representing us. I'm excited to see what she's um, going to do for us up there. And I think she's going to just have a major influence in getting people engaged, no matter if it's in the 12th district, the 7th district. I think I think some of Christiansburg is in the 8th district. I don't even know oh, who really? I don't even know who that that person is, but I think there's an 8th district that uh like Shawsville, Elliston, oh, okay. like up to like Sheila Motor Mile. Right. Something like that. So, I just think um she has the opportunity to really be that grassroots person that doesn't toe the line to, you know, these certain set of people. Maybe she can help us change the guard. Um, I've always wanted to ask you this question. Like, as far as your mindset goes and your, your future ambition, like, when this happened to you, I know you were kind of devastated. I know you were, like, wanting to maybe even run independent, you know, like just because you wanted to get them. Yep, that's like, all just, just take us through, uh, you know, those feelings and then your future ambition into, like, are you like you know? Was this a bad enough experience where you're going to dust off and try again? Or are you just done with it, type thing? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I can tell you from from when it first happened, the idea of just being just being boiled up with, you know, because you were you were you were lost. Yeah, I mean, you were just like, which way do I go? Like, yep. I'm wanting to go some way. I'm ready to let this energy go, but you just didn't know how to do it. Like, you didn't know. Uh, 
you know, it was painful to see you like in agony. You were in agony over it, you know. Um, so I, I appreciate the care you had. I appreciate that because if it were me and I got it, I was like, all right, well, that's not even that significant to me anyway. Uh, but it's just the level of care that you had for it and you were ready to go. Like you, your heart was already set on it and then they took it from you. Well, I, I considered running independent. The reason I did not run independent is because I did not want to split a conservative vote yeah. and lose the district. Um, and, and that would have been bad. Yeah. Um, and I care more about the people and the conservative, you know, views and values of, of, you know, district 12. That's more important than my personal agenda of now I'm going to run just on principle. Right. You know, and I am a man of principle because there was part of me that was like, hold on, you yeah. know, that's not right. I, I'm a fighter. I've been yeah. in martial arts for 32 years, right? I've done cage fighting and, you know, tournament fighting for years. And for me, I'm like, I'll just put the gloves on. It's right. time, it's time to go. <laughs> and, um, but you know, I had to stop and step back and go, what's what's best for the people yeah. of the district? And honestly, the best thing for the people was not to split the vote and have an independent option. The option should have been in the primary. Yeah. Um, after that, there was a, you know, more of a, I kind of just took a step back and said, I used to be extremely political, you know, on social media. Yeah. Uh, so between that happening and then the FBI showing up and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be quiet. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to post my food and kitty cats, you right. know, <laughs> and, and, but, uh, so I tried that for a while and honestly, I didn't post anything positive or negative, uh, going into this election yeah. about any of the candidates, even though I had plenty to say, um, when people asked me my opinion, Personally, one on one, I gave it to them. <laughs> um, I had I had a number of people message me, "Hey, well, you know, how are you voting? You know, are are you voting for this person?" And you know, I individually, one on one, I would let people know how how I was voting. Um, and I'm confident in the way I voted. Um, but you know what? You know, it is what it is. Moving forward. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I've had people ask me if I'm going to run for city council for Radford. Um, I was walking out of the bank one day and I, a guy stopped me, says, you're Jody Piles, right? I said, yeah. He says, I hear you're running for mayor. <laughs> I said, really? I said, That's a new one. Um, you know, Radford needs a mayor, a good one, but uh, <laughs> we need to get some of these, you know, liberals out of the way. Um, I've, I've kind of purposely become the, the thorn in uh, the mayor's flesh there. He, he's a nice guy. Uh, we just, we just obviously stand on different sides of the aisle, Yeah. but, um, you know, I've had people ask him running for mayor people. Are you running for town count or city council? Um, I've had, I've actually had surprisingly enough, a number of people ask me if I was running for sheriff of Pulaski County. Mm. Um, so that, that was an interesting, that was a new one too. And I'm like, I hadn't thought about it, you know? Um, but, uh, so that, that was different. They know my law enforcement background, know my, you know, political ties and stuff. So I guess they thought that would be a good fit. Um, but in all honesty, I don't know what's next. Um, I'm kind of in that wait and see moment. Um, I mean, you've been waffling back and forth, maybe even selling your house and living in a camper down at the river or something like that, right? You know what? Simplifying <laughs> is always good. Let's back up, re, you know, regain our you know position and, and figure out where we're fighting from, you know? Um, but no, it has been a thought of getting yeah. a nice, you know, a nice RV and put it out at Clater Lake Park or something. And go down to the uh, sportsman, shout out to the sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, there's been that thought I've, I've had the consideration of, you know, depending on how things are turning with the state, do I leave? You know, do I, do I, but you know, like I said, I'm a fighter. Mm. Um, you know, I've had a number of people, Hey man, don't leave. We need people like you to stay and fight. You need to run for something you need yeah. to do, you know, but I don't want to run for something just to run for something. Cause like I said, political ambitions is not part of who I was. Yeah. You know, I've never had that. Yeah. I, you were I, talked into it and then it got ripped away. Right. And now you're like, uh, might do something. Probably not. Maybe so. Don't know yet. Yeah. Who, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, you never know what you're going to see coming out of me in right. the future. 
Um, well, just keep us entertained because going down your Facebook timeline is a hoot. So, <laughs> well, it's it's. Um, I try to maintain that level of entertainment. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Um, I, people, and I've said this for a while. People either love me or hate me. There's no in between. Um, and you know, I'm to the point now. I'm starting my own rumors. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing the false ones that are going around about me. So right. you know, I, I'm I'm gonna start my own. Right. Uh, so so who knows? Who knows? So do you get? Do you get a level of entertainment when you cause people to talk like badly about you? Like when when you go down your timeline or you said something that like you know when they knew or thought that you were going to run, didn't didn't somebody create like a group about how they hated yeah. you or something? Yeah, it was Tell us about that. <laughs> so, I mean that's that's awesome, man. Um, <laughs> so you do get entertained. Oh, it was that. great. It was great. <laughs> it was we the people uh, against or opposed to Jody Piles for delegate. Yeah. And, dude, I mean, there was like a handful of people that was on it running that page, and most of them didn't even live in the 12th district. Right. That's what was funny. And I would go through and read, and they would take something I said, and one of them said that, oh, Jody said he's a he's former special forces. I'm like, where did that even come from? You know, a bunch of stupid stuff where I said I've operated outside the country, you know, doing rescues. That's not special forces, homie. That's, you know, it's a private organization. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, pe- people just, they take things and twist it. But it was funny. Uh, things I'd said in the past were, you know, I, I'm opposed to the organization of Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm opposed to that organization, same as I'm opposed to the KKK and any other racist organization. Yeah. You know, I believe that all lives matter. And so they took stuff like that. I said, oh, he's racist. What? You know, yeah. I mean, come on, get real. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, there was a number of things that was said. Uh, you know, I've, I've been accused of so many things. It's ridiculous. I mean, I still hear the rumors. Right. You know, I get people that message me or call me now. Hey, I heard this. And now it's to a point like um, I, I, I've i got a couple of friends that work in certain places where some of these rumors were going around. And, you know, I'll message, hey, what's going on in my life now? <laughs> you know, and I go and get my hair cut and the lady that owns the place, I'll go into her. And I'm like, hey, you know, so what have you heard? So what am I doing in my life now? Right. What's, what's going on? That's and so hilarious. It is Instead entertaining. of her asking you, you're asking her about your life. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it is entertaining because oh, people are just ignorant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, if they're talking about me, they're giving somebody else a break. I know who I am. You know, I know what I've done in my life. Nobody's perfect. You know, do I have things I'm ashamed of? Yeah. But I tell you what, if I've done half the stuff they've said, I would <laughs> I'd be, I'd be the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's, it's comical. Now, there have been some hurtful things, um, primarily because of um, the way that uh, – because of who has said them. When you look back and you and you see who has said or you get word about, oh, this person said this or whatever, that hurts you, especially right. when you know that, man, I thought me and this person were friends. Because so, so. you had a personal relationship with that person, and then they come out against you like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I'm like this. Somebody calls me. And says, or somebody walks up to me and says, hey, did you hear about Scott Bunn? I'd be like, no, but let's call Scott Bunn and talk to him about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? To me, if, if they're my friend, you know, I'm, I would expect that same thing. Don't, yeah. you know, I'm not going to entertain some gossip about somebody. Right. You know, if somebody wants to say something, great. Hold on. Let me, let me put Scott on the phone. Right. I want to hear what he's got to say about it. Right. You know, at least let him defend himself right. on this. You know, or, you know what, I don't want to hear this. I know Scott personally. You don't need to tell me this about Scott. Right. Um. But, you know, not everybody's like that, and that's fine. But it it's comical, but there have been some hurtful things. Uh, I'll tell you this. My life has completely flipped over the last year. Um, it's completely changed. Mm-hmm. Um, some of it for the better. Some of it not so much. Um, primarily because I stuck my head up. You know, I was the person that stuck their head out and stuck their neck out when other people wouldn't, and, it, you know. Felt like you got it chopped off. Oh, absolutely. And in some areas of my life, I did. So you think if you had it over to do again, would you have done it? Or would you have just kept your head down? Uh, do you, do you, is, it, is it one of those, if it don't kill me, it makes me stronger? I'm glad I did it. I live with no regrets. Or I could have avoided that, and I wish I did. Let me answer it this way. There are aspects of it that I wish I hadn't done. However, I understand that you can't go back and change things. So yeah. it's a matter of taking what I've experienced and what I've learned and how do I move forward from from here. Um, 
I'm glad that exposure hopefully is coming to this area of, of what happened and, you know, that we can make some changes on local levels. Yeah. Uh, it kind of sucked that it was me, but I would rather it be me than somebody else, yeah. you know, because obviously I'm handling it. Yeah. Um, not saying I'm stronger than anybody else. Maybe I'm just, I'm too stupid to walk away, you know? I, I don't know. Some of the some of the best people in the world were just a little bit too naive to stop, and they just kept pushing. Yeah, you know, and they were able to achieve. Yeah, a, a level of insanity has to happen in here, you know, I, to achieve anything. I'm a little bit crazy. Um, I think we all have to be like you want to just be average. Then you know you got to have that that little. There's just something in the highly successful people. You know, well, I was here and I, I stepped in while you guys were having a little meeting and they yeah. were talking about how you, you personally kind of set goals way up here. Yeah. And you might only reach right here, yeah. but your goal was up here. Yeah. And they were like, why are we doing this? And, you know, I heard your response and, and it was awesome. And because I'm the same way. Yeah. And, you know, to me, I don't set a goal for where I can achieve. I set a goal for something I can achieve because, you know what, that's what stretches me. Yes. That's what pulls me. Yeah. Now, does it mean I'm going to achieve that? If I achieve that, then I set the goal to. To, I set the bar too. I always low. want to be aiming above the target. Yep, and you know because we're we're not going to. I want to be stretched. I want to be every year. My birthday's in May. Every year at my birthday, I stop and I look at my life. Am I further along than I was last year? In every aspect, spiritually, yeah. have I grown with the Lord more than I, I I was last year? You know, financially, physically, am I in a better shape? Am I you know? And I and that's when I stop and take inventory. Okay, what do I need to work on this year? Mm-hmm. You know, because God blessed me with another 365 days, you know, on this earth. What am I doing with it? You know, am I, I believe in being good stewards of what God has given us. And that that's my life. You know, that's what, what am I doing in my life to, to make sure that I'm doing the best I can for him and the best I can for my fellow man. Yeah. And um, part of that is I got to set those goals. I got to set those bars high. And yeah, maybe I am a little crazy or a lot crazy. Yeah. I think that's why I like you. I think that's like I think we match the level of of crazy and ambition. I think you know, I think that's where we're cut from the same cloth is the level of ambition that I feel from you. The right. genuineness that I feel for you, you know, just being invited over to your house and right. you know having a drink or having a meal or something like that. Um so I just I'm glad we got to tell your story. I appreciate our friendship. Absolutely. Dude, I'm proud of you. I hope you do continue to stay around the area and you continue to be an impact on the community. Um, as far as like even just holding our leaders accountable to what they do, you know, like like you reading that bill and knowing more about the bill than the guy that's actually sitting in the getting ready to sit in the seat, like that's impressive. So I mean, I think people, I think people need to understand that I've seen the genuineness in you and and um, dude, I hope you do. Uh, you know, if even if you sell the house in Radford, stick around in some capacity. Uh, and we don't lose a good guy like you in the New River Valley. So, well, who knows? You might see me in a camper down by the river. Hey, that's fine as long as it's in the New River Valley. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but no, I, I think that you know, people need um, people need somebody to step up. Not you know whether it's me or whoever. So they need somebody to step up and kind of bridge that gap. And and I would encourage people to man, want make your voices heard. Like I said, show up to these local meetings, read bills for yourself as they come. It's all public, yeah. you know, and if there's something there you don't understand, man, ask somebody, you know, but it's all public knowledge. You need to educate yourselves because most of these guys don't have your best interests in mind. It's right. all about their own personal agendas and their own personal pocketbooks. All right. Well, so I don't know if, if you've been paying attention to the show or watching the show lately, but we're trying to gear this thing toward like more – recurring guests Mm -hmm. and i would love to have you like once every other month just come in talk about va politics talk about like you know life experiences talk about just like things that are going on that you're passionate about have my audience kind of know more about you use this as a springboard uh, for us both you know like whatever your ambition is and just have you know somebody i can sit here and, and burn an hour with actually have a meaningful conversation with right so um uh, i hope long, you can do that is the pay that going to be the same each time i come yep zero okay All right. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we uh get a bottle of bourbon or something like that and, and sip on it while we're talking next time or something like that but um you know, we want that Joe Rogan experience right. here in the New River Valley. Like, I'm trying to supply that. Now, so. I'll, I'll warn you. You start getting me in here too much, and the more comfortable I get, the more raw I'll get. Yeah. 
And <laughs> it, it's it's gonna. He's amazing storyteller. He is sarcastic and witty and like really funny. So I, God has blessed me with the gift of sarcasm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we we might you know we might attract a few viewers, but we might run a few off. That's fine. You know, like, like I said before, people either love me or hate me. And yeah. here's what I found out: those who hate me hate me for the very reason that they once loved me. Yeah. You know, people are attracted to you. Man, you speak your mind. Yeah. But then the second you speak your mind against something they don't oh, like. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, no. They don't like you then, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Your best quality is your worst. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I'd like love you. to come back. As long yeah. as you don't mind, your rating is going down. Hey, hey, <laughs> we don't have a lot of viewers at this moment. So, like, we are trying to do what we can to increase the viewership. And I think, like I said, the recurring person that has influence and is entertaining and, and like, I just feel like, I'm creating a diverse lineup. Now I might still interject, you know, like a story like the sportsman or, you know, uh, like, you know, if Marie or if somebody in local politics knows of a story uh, kind of before it breaks and they want to come in here and talk about absolutely. it, I would love to do that. But I want to, I want to start developing um, some relationships like with my audience and the guests. So yeah. when the, when the guest comes on, they're excited about the guest. And I think that would, I think you would fit that mold of like, you know, People are paying attention to you. They've noticed you. I think that you have great opinions. You are a good storyteller. So I appreciate your willingness to, to do that. Well, hopefully we can get people to set up a Facebook page of people against Scott Bunn. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's going to be hate on every on every level. So exactly. if, if we have if we even have a little bit of success, there's going to be you know attention from people that are trying to like they're jealous. You know, trying to take us down yeah, so to jealous. speak yeah anytime you stick your head up and you're doing something that other people are afraid to do yeah people get jealous yeah it's okay all right man we'll wrap that up hey um what was i gonna say i don't know we'll schedule we'll schedule another time here yeah, in like let me know. six weeks or so um what is that Episode 17, 16, 17. All right, episode 17, Jody Piles. That was a great episode, man. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, subscribe, like, all that, all that stuff. If you're watching this on Facebook, go to YouTube. We need subscribers on YouTube as fast as possible. So help us out there. We got this, we got this thousand subscriber champagne bottle we need to pop. So we need to get there. We're at what, like 305, 303, something like that. We got a long ways to go. So come through for us. Subscribe on YouTube so we can pop this bottle. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.